So Windows 11 is here officially. This week, Microsoft rolled out the first Windows Insider build for its new OS, and I took a look to see what was different from the leaked build we saw a couple weeks ago that pretty much fell off a truck. And while I liked what I saw about Windows 11 before, I think the full version of the OS that we're looking at now, which is far more feature complete, just looks like a huge step forward from Windows 10. It may not be really evident at first, but I think once you get into it, both Windows diehards and PC newcomers are gonna find a lot to like here. So the star of this new interface is pretty much what we saw in the leak. It's the new centered taskbar, which is filled entirely with icons. There's also the revamped start menu, which has app shortcuts at the top, some recommendations, and you can hit a button at the top right to see the full unfiltered start menu. And I think this is gonna be the core workflow for a lot of people, and it's probably gonna be controversial. You know, this is the biggest change Microsoft has made to the start menu in a long while. And don't forget that Windows 10 start menu itself was a bit of a concession from the Windows 8 start page, which everybody hated, nobody liked that. So this one does away with live tiles, a feature that I don't think many people actually used. So I'm happy to see them gone. I'm happy to see Microsoft kind of streamline things a bit. And uh, you know, I feel the same way as I did when we saw the build leak. Uh, I typically don't go fishing around my start menu very much. Um, I normally hit the windows key, do a search and load up some apps. Uh, so having just a bunch of shortcuts right at the top of the start menu, I think is just much more functional and modern. And so I started to dive deeper into this Windows 11 preview, you know, it just really struck me how incomplete that early build was. Uh, even the notifications tray here, which you hit by hitting that button in the lower right hand corner of the taskbar, uh, that is fundamentally different than the way it was in Windows 10. Now, when you hit that icon, you see your notifications at the top right, and they're very clean and neatly organized. And you see, you know, the calendar right below that. And if you wanna see those system shortcuts, the things that let you turn Wi-Fi on and off or change Bluetooth settings, those are now in the system menu, which pops up when you hit uh, either your Wi-Fi or networking button in the bottom right or the volume icon um, or your battery if you're on a laptop. So those are all now just like in the nice little menu that pops right up and gives you all those settings right there. It is cleaner than Windows 10, which I think is gonna make a lot of people happy just because uh, those settings used to be really confusing. You had to click an extra button to expand them in Windows 10. It was kind of sometimes hard to tell what each setting did. So now this cleaner interface, uh, I think is gonna be good for most people. Uh, you certainly get fewer settings here in this short system menu, but you know, I, I don't really mind it too much. Now, this isn't actually that new for Windows. Microsoft has been pushing, you know, an icon focus taskbar since Windows 7. Uh, but with Windows 7, 8, and 10, you also have the ability to uh, enable labels. So you could see what was actually in each window before you clicked on it. That's something I always just kind of enabled by default because I have big monitors, and especially with ultra wide screens, you have that screen real estate. It's really nice to just see what something is before you click it. That is just not an option at all in Windows 10. And I think I can see why. Microsoft is definitely going for a cleaner interface here. From what I can tell, Microsoft doesn't seem that interested in bringing labels back. So it's really for people like me, we just kind of have to learn a new way to use Windows. But after using that leaked build for a couple of weeks and now this insider preview, I'm definitely fine with the new icon centered interface. It's still easy to find things. Now it is a little annoying to have to learn to reuse Windows in a different way, but you know what? I'll take this because Windows 11 also handles multitasking in a much better way than any Windows I've seen before. It's really that new quick snap feature that I really, really enjoy. It appears when you hover your mouse over the maximize icon, the top right of every window, and it just basically gives you different portions of the window that you can push that, that app into. So say you want Safari in the far left, or you want Slack on the upper right of your screen, that shortcut just pushes that window there. You don't have to drag it and wait for the auto snap feature to work. Auto snapping was nice and that's been around for a while now, but it didn't always work the way I wanted and certainly didn't work if you want to like center a window completely, which is an option now in some quick snap menus. What's really cool in Windows 11 is that once you quick snap something to a location in a window, those other blocks of your screen, uh, they also pop up a sort of mini task manager so you can see all the other apps you're running. So if I put Microsoft Edge on the left, on the right side, I can immediately choose to open another browser like Chrome or open Slack or Spotify or something. And within five seconds, I can fill my screen with all the apps I really wanna use. And I just find that really useful. And another thing is once you start snapping apps together, that creates a snap group, which shows up in your taskbar. 
Now, whenever you hover your mouse over those app icons in the taskbar, you'll see either the individual app windows or you'll see the snap group. And that's useful because if you open another app and it takes up the entire screen or something, or just something, you know, kind of messes up your entire flow, you can go back to that shortcut, hit the snap group, and those windows are right back where they were. It may not seem like much, but I think for Windows power users, you know, it's the sort of thing that can just make this operating system work better for you and make you more productive. And that really was Microsoft's big push with Windows 10. They talked a lot about flow whenever they bring up Surface devices. Uh, you know, flow is the word that they keep saying a lot. And I feel like Windows 11 is built in such a way to just keep me productive, keep me, you know, looking at the apps I need to look at, if I need to jump back into workspace with those apps, it's not that tough. Another new addition to Windows 11 is a slightly reworked file explorer, which honestly hasn't changed much over the years. There's a new menu up top, which is much simpler than Windows 10 version. Uh, you've got a few basic icons for cutting, copying, and pasting files. It's cleaner than before, certainly. Uh, it is certainly looks nicer than the ribbon, but I do think it's a little confusing at first. There's one button for renaming files that I just didn't know what it did until I actually highlighted a file. And I will say right now in Windows 11, it's still super buggy. Um, sometimes I reboot into Windows 11 and the old file explorer appears. So I'm not sure what's happening there. I chalk it up to a preview bug. And another thing I think a lot of people will notice is the new settings app, which is more unified than it was in Windows 10. Now it all is just cleanly on a single screen. There's navigation on the left. There's all your system, you know, setting options on the right, and you can drill down as you need to. That is actually pretty close to the way it worked in Windows 10, but in Windows 10, when you first hit settings, you're presented with a wall of icons, um, you know, and things to click through. It seemed less clean, it seemed a little more confusing. I think Windows 11 just refines that quite a bit. And if you're looking for a specific setting, you can also search for it in the search bar there, or the search bar throughout the OS too, even the one in the start menu. As for other changes in this preview, there's a redesigned Microsoft Store app, which now also has navigation along the left side rather than the top. Uh, to me, that's just a little easier to use. It's cleaner. That whole top hand navigation, uh, that is kind of a remnant from the old Metro interface in Windows 8. Uh, so yeah, good to be rid of that completely. There's also the new reworked Xbox app, which we saw before in that leaked build. It still looks good. I think it's an easy way to find Game Pass games and you know games you've installed in your system. And Microsoft also brought back widgets into Windows 11, which you know, seem fine. Uh, now I think it's much clearer what they're trying to do here. Widgets is something they took away from Windows since uh, it used to be a feature on Windows 7, I believe, right on the desktop. So now they're in a button that you can hit on the taskbar. They pop up in the left-hand side. They offer little snippets of information like what's the weather, what's coming up in your calendar. There's even an entry for esports competition. So I don't know what Microsoft is going to do with this yet. Maybe that could be useful for a lot of people. I don't really foresee myself dealing with widgets too much. Now, to be clear, this is just the first Windows Insider preview for Windows 11. There's still a lot of features we aren't yet seeing. So that includes things like Auto HDR, which uh, first appeared on the Xbox Series S and X. Uh, that brings HDR uh, into older games and helps if you have an HDR monitor. It helps with lighting and just makes things look a little more dynamic. Uh, that is not available to test just yet. I'm also really looking forward to trying Android apps in Windows 11, but that's not available to test either. I do think like that has the potential to make Windows 11 just a lot more useful as an OS, and maybe it can open the doors to playing some nice mobile games too, just so you don't have to run something like BlueStacks on your system to get other games on your, your Windows PC. Microsoft also plans to bake in Teams chat right into the Windows 11 taskbar eventually. I can't test that just yet, but personally, that's not something I'm too excited for, mainly because I don't really use Microsoft Teams very much. There are also some features I haven't been able to test with this build. Microsoft is saying when you dock a Windows 11 laptop to an external monitor, it more cleanly handles how windows go in and out. So it'll remember where you place your windows when you plug a monitor back in. And if you unplug a monitor, they'll just come into your taskbar and be minimized. So no more of that really messy jumbly windows that happens when you disconnect the secondary monitor. That sounds pretty nice. And one feature Microsoft never really talked about much is this new dynamic refresh rate feature, which will work on high refresh rate monitors. So basically gaming laptop monitors or gaming screens. Um, when you're inking or scrolling, it'll dynamically enable the higher refresh rate so that looks smoother, and then take away that refresh rate uh, when you're just reading. And that's something that's meant to save battery life. 
I think that could be pretty useful because right now when I test gaming laptops, I just typically leave the highest refresh rate on, which isn't great for battery life, I get it. Now, even though this is a really early preview of Windows 11, uh, I'm not surprised why Microsoft is rolling it out there so everybody could take a look. It's pretty stable. I'd be careful about installing it on your primary computer, but it is a way for Microsoft to understand how Windows 11 is working on hardware that's out there right now. One thing that's a little controversial now is that they're requiring TPM 2.0 and secure boot for the final version of Windows 11. That's something they didn't require for this insider preview. And I think because Microsoft wants to see how the OS runs on maybe slightly older hardware or less capable hardware, it's also unclear which CPUs are fully gonna be supported with Windows 11. I believe they're saying now, if you have an AMD Zen 2 or above processor or an Intel 8th gen or above, you should be fine. Uh, but they're gonna really be looking at Zen 1 processors from AMD and Intel 7th gen processors to see how well Windows 11 works there. So even though we're pretty early, I'm expecting to see a lot more updates uh, on this preview and future previews for Windows 11. I think the vision for what Microsoft is building here is pretty clear. They're just trying to give us a cleaner, more polished version of Windows that can make everybody more productive. I think that's a pretty impressive goal for Microsoft because it's not typically a company you'd associate with uh, you know, really strong design or anything. But now I feel like we're getting there with Windows just using this OS feels nice. And I feel like that's a big step forward. At the very least right now, I can tell that Windows 11 doesn't just feel like a minor upgrade over Windows 10. Stay tuned to Engadget for more of our Windows 11 coverage. And if you dug this video, be sure to like and subscribe.